1997, Captain Charles Moore was sailing home to California from a yacht race in Hawaii when he decided to try a different route home through the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre. And in the process, he discovered what is known today as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is created because the gyre is located at the confluence of several major oceanic currents. And as a result, all of the junk that has been floating along in these currents for thousands of miles gets deposited in this one area, creating a variable floating landfill that some estimates place as being up to the size of Texas in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. To quote Captain Moore, here I was in the middle of the ocean, and there was nowhere I could go to avoid the plastic. Plastic is one of the major pollutants in the Great Pacific Garbage Pass. And one of the greatest sources of plastic pollution throughout the world are plastic bags. For instance, the Ocean Conservancy hosts an international coastal cleanup day once a year, wherein volunteers from around the world clean up their local coastlines for one day. And the day celebrated its 25th anniversary this past September, releasing their 25-year collection totals. 7,825,319 plastic bags have been collected by volunteers over the past 25 years on this coastal cleanup day. And this is an, extremely, an extreme problem threatening our environment because not only are these plastic bags an aesthetic eyesore, plastic bags are also proven to be harmful to many species of marine life, including some forms of endangered seabirds and sea turtles. So you might wonder, well, where are all of these plastic bags coming from? According to the American Plastic Manufacturers website, the average American uses 500 plastic grocery bags per year. And according to the World Watch Institute, Americans collectively throw away 100 billion plastic bags every year. And these plastic bags aren't just sitting around quietly in a landfill for a few years before decomposing. Because according to the World Watch Institute, plastic bags can take up to 1,000 years to degrade. That means that the next 12 generations of Americans will be looking at your plastic bag. If these environmental concerns aren't enough reason to make you realize that we have a serious problem with our plastic bag use, consider the cost. The city of San Francisco's Department of the Environment determined that it cost the city 17 cents per bag to dispose of these bags properly. And when you consider those 500 bags per person per year, that money adds up very quickly. To sum up our plastic bag problem, I would quote Mr. Achim Steiner, the Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Program, when discussing marine litter, when he says, quote, some of the litter, like thin, single-use plastic bags, which choke marine life, should be banned or phased out rapidly everywhere. Which is why I'm here to argue to you today that the United States needs to implement a tax on plastic grocery bags to discourage our overconsumption of them with the ultimate goal of reducing their use in our environment. Now you might say, well hold on a second, what about recycling as an answer to this problem? But I'd like to explain to you now why recycling in and of itself is not an effective way to address our plastic bag problem. First of all, there are no federal laws on the books concerning the recycling of plastic bags, and so that means there's no mandate for us to try to recycle these bags to prevent them from winding up in our landfills. Second of all, even if out of the goodness of your heart you want to recycle your plastic bags, this is very difficult to do because many curbside recycling programs don't accept plastic bags because they're so lightweight that they clog the machinery, the sorting machinery at the recycling plant, and as a result, they will not accept them. Now, some of you might have seen plastic bag recycling take-back programs at different stores like Walmart and Target, and you might think, well, what if we require all retailers that sell plastic bags to have these sort of take-back programs? But a May 2010 report from the Plastic Bag Recycling Task Force of the Solid Waste Agency of Lake County, Illinois, found that for some retailers, especially smaller ones, the costs associated with these plastic bag take-back programs are prohibitive. So if recycling isn't an effective way in and of itself to address this problem, why haven't we found other solutions to our plastic bag epidemic? Well, frankly, a large part of the reason is that our American plastic manufacturing industry spends a lot of money every year lobbying against bans or taxes on plastic bags and instead promote recycling as the answer. However, as we've seen, recycling is not an effective way to deal with this problem. For example, a 2008 CNN article stated that less than 1% of plastic bags are recycled globally every year. Clearly, recycling in and of itself is not going to address this problem. However, I would like to propose a solution to you today that I think may help us deal with this plastic bag crisis. I propose that the United States should levy a 10 cent tax per single, bag, per single use plastic bag 
sold by retailers and pharmacies that would allow the retailer to keep one cent of the revenue raised for, administration, for administrative purposes and up to two cents if they already had an in-store recycling program to help defray costs for that program. The rest of the money raised by the tax would be reallocated to the federal government to divert into funding for various other environmental programs. Now you might think that is a crazy off-the-wall idea. However, it actually has precedent in our very own country. Montgomery County, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. already have taxes on plastic bags that have been proven successful. And the Plastic Bag Reduction Act of 2009, which died in a congressional committee, would have created a similar program. Additionally, we are being outshone by many other international countries and cities in this area, as cities and countries including Mumbai, Australia, Ireland, Italy, South Africa, China, and Tanzania all have some form of ban or tax on plastic bags already in place. Now looking at why plastic bags, why taxing them would be an effective way to deal with this problem, we can look at the example of Washington, D.C. After the plastic bag tax was levied in D.C., the bag use decreased from 270 million plastic bags in 2009 to only 55 million plastic bags in 2010. That's an 80% reduction in all the plastic bags used, and this data is from a Washington Post article from February of this year. Additionally, the tax earned approximately $2 million for Washington, D.C., and furthermore, no negative effects were reported by many business owners. In a survey of 51 business owners commissioned by the Alice Ferguson Foundation, a local nonprofit environmental organization dedicated to cleaning up the area surrounding the Potomac River, 58% uh, of business owners reported no change to their businesses following the implementation of this tax while 20% actually reported a positive change in the form of less litter around their storefronts and savings on the number of bags they had to purchase to serve their customers. Clearly, this tax was very effective in our nation's capital. But looking at a tax on a national level, we can see the example of Ireland, where a similar plastic bag tax levied in 2002 saw widespread success. The cost of administration for the program was only 3% cents of, the to uh, 3 excuse me, of the total revenue raised and additionally, the number of plastic bags entering the consumption stream was reduced by approximately 90% in Ireland, according to data from a 2007 article from the journal Environmental and Resource Economics. Clearly, this tax was very effective on a national level in Ireland. Obviously, this, ta this tax would be administered and enforced by our federal government, but you might wonder, well, hold on, how much will this cost, particularly in this fiscal environment? Well, looking into the example of Ireland, it cost approximately 2.6 million U.S. dollars to implement the tax in Ireland and to run an advertising campaign which educated the public on why they were suddenly having to pay this tax. However, first-year revenues raised from the tax were on the order of 16.5 million U.S. dollars. Clearly, this tax would more than pay for itself if implemented. Now, of course, revenues would ultimately decrease as hopefully usage of plastic bags decreased but this wouldn't be a major issue because the majority of the costs associated with implementing this tax are start with this tax are startup costs in nature. And additionally, the goal of this tax is not to raise money for our government, no matter how badly they might need money right now, but is to change behavior. And I believe that it would effectively do this. Obviously, it is important, however, to consider potential disadvantages of implementing a tax like this. These include the fact that the tax could potentially be a burden financially on some. However, I believe that this problem is addressed by the fact that this tax is not mandatory. It's entirely avoidable with the use of reusable shopping bags, which would more than pay for themselves after a few uses, and which are much more environmentally friendly. Additionally, it's important to consider the potentially negative effects on American plastic manufacturers. Remember all that lobbying money we talked about earlier? However, I believe that this problem can be addressed by the fact that these manufacturers can move into producing other plastics products, and honestly, our country has a history of putting our environment first. Consider substances like DDT and asbestos. When we found out that those were harmful to the environment, we either banned or heavily restricted their use. And I believe that plastic bags constitute a similar threat that require a similar plan of action and severity in order to address this threat. Finally, it's not like plastic bags are some sort of entrenched tradition. As ubiquitous as they may have come, they've actually only been around since about the 1970s. And I believe that if we survived without them for so long before, we can certainly do without them again in the future. In closing, I'd like to consider some of the many advantages of implementing a tax on plastic bags, with the ultimate goal being to reduce their prevalence in our society. First of all, we would have a healthier environment. 
As I proved earlier, plastic bags have an extremely detrimental effect on our environment as it is. And having a healthier environment is really an initiative that I think that we can all support. Second of all, by reducing the number of plastic bags we use, we save on important oil and natural gas resources that are required to manufacture plastic bags in the first place. Finally, the additional funds raised by this tax would be able to go towards different federal funding for different environmental programs and support other environmental initiatives in our country. We can't allow our consumerist culture of convenience to get in the way of doing what's really morally and ethically right in this scenario. I know I certainly didn't used to think about where my plastic bag went, I just put my groceries in and sort of moved on. But now I've really begun to see that plastic bags can have an incredibly adverse effect on our environment. And I hope that we won't allow our culture of convenience of what's easy and fast to get in the way of doing what's really right. Given plastic bags harmful effects on our environment, their lingering nature as pollutants being around for the next 12 generations, and the fact that many other countries have already taken it upon themselves to take the initiative on this issue, I believe that the question is not whether or not we can afford to tax plastic bags, but frankly whether or not we can wait to, uh, whether or not we can afford to wait to act on this prevalent problem. Thank you.